Chapter Twenty Seven of the Seventh Sleuths Club. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Seventh Sleuths Club by Carol Norton. Chapter Twenty Seven. Home, sweet home. Geraldine, supposing that they were about to leave for the city, could not understand why her friends had not called to say goodbye. "'Perhaps they will be waiting at the station,' she said to Alfred, when they were all in the big car, with Danny O'Neill at the wheel. "'Like as not,' the unsuspecting lad replied. The colonel glanced at his watch. "'Morrison,' he said, "'it's a whole hour before the train time. Would you mind if we went farther out onto the Willowbed Road? I have a little business there that I would like to attend to.' "'It's all right with me,' the other man replied, and Alfred, happening to look at his father, was sure that he had turned away to hide a smile. Ten minutes later the car turned into the circling drive and stopped in front of the pillared porch of an old colonial home. "'What a pleasant place this is,' Geraldine said. "'Who lives here, Colonel Wainwright?' "'Some good friends of mine,' that gentleman replied as he prepared to leave the car. Then, as though it were a sudden afterthought, he added, "'I wish you would all come in for one moment. We'll have plenty of time to get to the train.' It seemed odd to the girl that they should call upon strangers just before leaving town, but she was too fond of the colonel not to willingly do whatever he suggested, and so, leaning upon his proffered arm, she slowly climbed the wide steps. To Geraldine's surprise, the door was opened by Susan, and when they entered the wide hall, she saw Matilda, who was beaming upon them. What could it mean? Glancing into the attractive room on either side, the girl was amazed to see the furniture which had been in their city home. Then, suddenly she understood, and, turning a radiant face towards her father, she exclaimed, "'Oh, Dad, we aren't going to Dorchester, are we? I'm so glad. But do tell me, how did you happen to find this wonderful place? I just adore old-fashioned colonial houses.' "'It's where I was born,' her father replied. "'Your grandmother and I have been planning it all to surprise you and Alfred.' "'Well, it sure is a surprise to me,' the lad declared, "'and I'm bully glad that we're going to stay in the country.' "'Do the girls know about it?' Geraldine asked, "'but before anyone could reply there sounded in the driveway a ringing of a cowbell, "'the tooting of horns, and the gay laughter of young people.' Doris was the first to enter the hall of the Morrison home when the door opened, but a troop of laughing boys and girls followed closely. "'Oh, Geraldine!' Doris exclaimed. "'Isn't this a grand and glorious surprise? We didn't know a thing about it until this morning. We had supposed that you were going to Dorchester, and we planned being at the station to say good-bye when someone phoned Jack for us to come here instead.' "'We are all so glad that you were to stay in Sunnyside,' Mary declared. Tears gathered in the lovely eyes of the girl, who was still not strong, and Jack, noticing this, held out his arm. "'Princess Geraldine,' he said, "'permit me to lead you into your throne, where you may receive the homage of your rejoicing subjects.' A moment later, when the happy girl was seated near the fireplace, with Jack standing at her side, Doris, looking about the room, exclaimed, "'Where is Danny O'Neill? Why isn't he here with us?' "'I think he went to the garage,' Alfred said. "'I'll bring him in.' The two lads soon entered the house together, and Alfred's arm was thrown over the other boy's shoulder to ensure him that he considered him a friend and an equal. Doris walked up to them, holding a long envelope before the Irish boy. She exclaimed, "'Mr. Danny O'Neill, if you can guess what this envelope contains, you may have it.' "'Why, Doris, how should I know?' the mystified lad replied. "'I've never had a letter written to me by anyone.' "'Well, you certainly have one now,' Doris declared. "'But I'm going to read it out to the entire company, so please lend me your ears.' Then, opening the important-looking envelope, she read, "'Dorchester Art Institute, March the 1st. "'Mr. Danny O'Neill, we are glad to inform you that the carving which you submitted in our recent contest has been awarded first place.' and as a result you will receive a scholarship in our institution for one year from this date all of your expenses to be paid we advise you to come at once as new classes will be formed on monday march the fifth the expression on the face of the irish lad was first puzzled and then radiant doris he said you entered that carving in the contest and i didn't know a thing about it oh danny mary exclaimed as she held out her hand i congratulate you for all of us 
A little later, Doris found the lad standing alone by a window, gazing out at the trees that were showing a haze of silvery green. He looked up with a welcoming smile. Doris, he said, I'm thinking how pleased my mother would be. Then he added, I'm going to try hard to succeed. Good angel, I want you to be proud of me. When the others were gone, Jack remained to spend the evening with Alfred, so he said, but, during the long twilight, he and Geraldine sat before the fireplace, and the girl listened to the lad's dreams of his future on a cattle ranch, and her heart was made happy when Jack said earnestly, "'You'd love it, Geraldine. From now on I am going to hope that you will be there with me.'" End of chapter 27 End of the Seventh Sleuths Club